Thank you so much for stopping by and tuning into this video. But before we do get into the actual video itself, I do need to take a quick moment to thank all of my members. Your support does not go unnoticed and it truly is really appreciated. Besides getting your name here on screen at the beginning of reactions, if you decide to become a member, you get other perks such as special channel emojis and every other week I live stream and the weeks where I am not live streaming, I do members only videos. It all depends on what tier you are. The live streams are from progressive overload and up. The members only videos are for your eyes only. And if you just want to support me and have your name here on screen, you can do that from the shout out supporter, which is the lowest here of course i appreciate everybody that comments likes and subscribes but i did just want to take this opportunity to say an extra thank you to all of my members we have a very good community here so feel free to join the details of for joining will be in the description hey guys hey guys what's up and welcome back to the channel my name is lona i'm also known as shakar transformations i'm an online health and fitness coach and i'm also a bodybuilder but i'm not a figure bodybuilder anymore guys I'm becoming a wellness bodybuilder. If you're wondering what the difference between wellness and figure is, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell because I will be talking over that in an upcoming vlog that I haven't filmed yet. I'll film that tomorrow when I'm doing a day in the life sort of thing and I'll go through the posing and the differences between the poses and I'll take you through a leg day because I'm going to train my legs three times a week now just to get those extremely thick thighs. That's basically the goal with wellness. I did compete last weekend. Uh, I did the MPC Balkan Grand Prix, which was the first time they brought the MPC to Bulgaria. But actually, the show was really high standard. Everybody looked insane. There's a couple of people there. There were actually some pros there, um, elite pros, which is IFBB. So I'm not too sure how that works, but I suppose when you're, if you're a pro, you can compete anyway. So I think they are, yeah, they are IFBB elite pros. Some of which have like one guy that I know he competes at the Arnold, a woman that's like quite a famous bikini athlete. So the standard was really high, which is good. There are also some people that definitely will turn pro in the future, guaranteed. Uh, but yeah, uh, I didn't do very well. But then the feedback was that I need to change my categories uh, by two judges. So that's basically what I'm going to do at five weeks out four and a half well basically almost four weeks out when well, by the time i'm filming this so that's something pretty crazy most people don't change categories <laughs> less than a month out or just over a month out from a show but here we are who doesn't like a bit of added stress to life right but we're not here for that today we are going to look at april lauren her full day of eating video i scammed sca scam scammed I scanned through it and saw some interesting bits. Probably won't watch the whole video because uh, it's long, but I will leave it linked down below if you want to watch it before we get into it. If you do want to enter the Phoenix Rising, it, I will start sending out the welcome packs from next week, starting for the 25th of October. That's happened really quick, by the way. But yeah, if you want to join, then email me on the email down below. I have my cup of coffee and my jug of my bucket of tea at the ready and uh let's get into this video hello beautiful people welcome back she's one and a half speeds by the way to my channel wake up right i'm april born and i'm on a journey to lose a lot of weight in today's weigh-in wednesday i'm doing a lot of weight she's changed that it's not 150 pounds or 200 pounds it's just a lot of weight interesting a full day of eating and i am so excited to share it with you starting with what i eat for breakfast on my weight loss journey let's do it i think she does calorie counting so because i skimmed through it and she's doing the whole manual tracking by looking things up online and then adding it to a notebook which is fine like if you want to do it like that it's just a bit of a roundabout way of doing it if she's actually weighing things out and so we're getting the weights of food i'm gonna count it and for whatever reason i did cook a few meals today even though we have meal prep so i um i cooked a dinner and i was just really craving a quesadilla and so i made one and then i had made this omelet and i don't know if the omelet is what spurred my quesadilla one but it did and it happened water is also something that's so important to me and just being in a good state of mind i don't know what it is about water that just helps me stay a little bit fresher so yeah, like not drinking water, it gives me headaches. I don't understand how people consume so little water. But um, I guess it's just one of those things, if you don't do it a lot, then you don't get used to it. 
I'm kind of getting your H2O, I highly recommend But you should just drink a lot of water. I, I skimmed through some of it because, like, she didn't actually so, show how much it was, the weight. And I couldn't see from the eggs how much it was either. So I'm assuming when we get to the... the I think at the end she does the writing it down of everything. And then I'll, I'll do my own calorie counting then, possibly. But... Um, yeah, I mean, like, an egg an egg and cheese omelette is fine. She puts some broccoli in there. That's fine. Very sort of, like, keto-friendly breakfast. I like cheese and eggs. I've had it for pretty much every day of this prep. And I had two rice cakes, the only carbs I was having. Cut them out. I've dropped my calories as well, because I need to get fucking shredded for this next show. Recommend it. And I use this electro light powder not all day. I drink from a gallon of water bottle for the most part, which you can see in this clip as well. Or in a cup. In a Electrolytes, but why is she drinking electrolytes? <laughs> what to go on a like her hour walk? You don't need electrolytes for that. You need electrolytes when you really train a lot and you sweat a lot and you're really putting your body through the ringer. You don't need electrolytes for a walk. So, stuff like this, I don't know if it's product placement, I don't know if she's being, um, if it's something that she's got like some sort of affiliate link with. It's not something you don't need. You don't, in terms of supplements. You don't really need to use anything. The only product that's been searched to make a difference is creatine. So that's the only that's the only supplement that actually has research benefits to it. I like drinking aminos. I always drink essential amino acids as opposed to BCAAs, which is branched chain amino acids, because that's only three aminos, right? Essential is all of them. The reason is like I do find it helps me with muscle recovery. And I just hydrate a lot more through training. And it's very important that you hydrate through training and whilst you're training because it's, you know, you're sweating. You're losing liquid, you're losing fluids, liquid. You're losing fluids, so you need to add fluids in. And I like the taste of it. So it's one of those things, like, it's one of my tricks. This one of my prep hacks that I've been doing is putting aminos that are nice tasting in a large one and a half liter bottle of water, stick the bottle in the freezer, let it go semi-frozen, and you have, like, amino slushy. It's very refreshing. But you don't need to use aminos, you don't need to use pre-workout, you don't need to use whey protein. I use all of it, but you don't need to. I, um... You certainly don't need to. Use. She's like very clever, isn't it, the way she's doing that. Um, this is product placement, 100%. It's, well, let's have a look. Is there a link for it? No, there isn't. Maybe she wants to get an affiliate link. I don't think that's going to happen from a uh, oh, cage muscle. What's the name of the guy? He's all the tattoos, isn't he? Gav Gavin? Is it Gavin? That has cage muscle? I think it is, isn't it? I use a pure electrolyte powder because it helps me with my leg cramps. I overuse my calves, just the way I'm built. And um, with that, I get a lot of early versus in my calves. So this really helps with that. And if you get cramping, magnesium helps a lot as well. And if you have problems with lower back bumps, you want to use taurine. Also, like rolling them out with a, with a ball, so... That is what I do. <laughs> and I it's a very good coffee. Toffee drops? Hmm. I think it's very important. It kind of goes without saying that if you do drink something like this electrolyte powder, VPN just released some electrolyte powder. It doesn't have any calories. This stuff that I have does have some calories and it also has a couple carbs. So you want to make sure you're tracking. If you're tracking carbs, which I don't track carbs, I just track calories right now. Um, and I track these calories for this beverage that I am having. I heard you. Oh, that's good. That's what you should do. Everything you consume, you should track. So like coffee itself, I don't track, but I stick 10 grams of butter in here, which actually helps me with just like staving off the hunger in the morning. But yeah, everything you consume, you should track. My bucket of tea, nothing in here to track. Sugar-free. This is why, like, this is why you should just, if you can't drink sugar-free drinks, just go with sugar-free. Like, I don't understand why you would drink something that has calories in it. It's just, if you can have a Coke or Diet Coke, why would you drink the normal Coke and have all the calories? It makes no sense shared that september was a little rough for me with tracking with doing a lot of the things that i did but i still did them it's not that i didn't track at all ever and it's not that i didn't walk at all ever i just i wasn't hitting my goals even like with my mile for time it really was just representative of my entire month to be honest one of the things one of the best things that i've done i think for the way that i've been feeling is overemphasizing cleaning and by overemphasize i just mean i created a home channel and the home channel is not necessarily about cleaning although i will do Somebody else, I was having a member's live stream the other day and somebody was saying that she's, she kind of referred to me. There's a lot of stuff in here that she's doing now that I'm fairly sure I've brought up before. But I'm like, well, why isn't she showing this part of her life? But it's good, like, it's nice to, I think it's nice 
to see her do just like homey things because before i like from from the videos that i've seen like i don't watch all of her videos but i've done quite a fair few reactions by now and i've skimmed through quite a fair few videos and the fact that she's always like filming in a home and basically this is her job right which is fine like there's nothing wrong with that being your job but you never show yourself doing any chores and stuff like that i don't know i think that's weird for me like when i vlog i always show my chores because it's part and parcel of what i'm doing so it's nice to see that she is doing shit like this because i was just wondering like does she literally do nothing but film twice a week for a vlog and edit that like does she not have things to do at home all day long but you know it's just like just show the the, the normal side of like life the normal side of life because i think it makes her more relatable lots of clean with me's but doing this has helped me having a clean space a clean home has helped me just stick to my routines better than i would have if i was living in chaos having i 100 percent agree with that i granted my place is not as neat and tidy at the moment as what it could be just because like sometimes i just got i just don't have the fucking energy to clean the way i would like to clean but at the same time if I if I know there's like a ton of dishes in the sink, because it happens quickly. I eat like five times a day. So dishes accumulate quickly unless I wash up after every single time I've eaten. And I don't do that. I find like if I can see it's just too messy and there's too many things laying around, I just can't relax. I literally cannot relax because I'll sit and procrastinate thinking about the things that I need to do. I do think that having a tidy space, it doesn't have to be like spick and span and be able to like, you know, shine everywhere with no dust. But just the fact that it's not messy makes a big difference a structured environment is so important for me when i'm in the state of mind it's nice to see that she's walking both her dogs and like i know she's just there's talk about that she doesn't like walking to at the same time because they're big dogs and she can't handle them which is i understand and i understand equally that if that's the case that she should work walk, walk, walk them separately Equally, if you have a dog that's so big that you can't handle them, why have them? But besides that point, it's nice to see that she's walking both of them. But if she walked them one at a time, that if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. Sorry, my battery was about to die. I, these cooler days are so rare. This was a day where it was in the low 70s, high 60s when I decided to walk them in the morning and that was awesome. I don't understand. Like it looks like fall, like the trees and stuff, but it doesn't feel like fall. It feels like summer. But look at this beautiful coloring and like the red berries that are on this tree. It's just so beautiful. And there's a few others, like there was a magnolia tree that I thought was really beautiful on this walk that I took footage of. And I decided just to film the pups. I haven't really taken them out during the day and walked them a ton. I usually take them in the evening. Like I, I mean, I take them if it's cool enough. If it's cool enough, I go. I tried earlier in the summer before it got too, too hot with their vest and stuff, but then it just kept getting hotter and hotter and even the vest and things were not enough. But now that it's starting to cool back off, we are enjoying our walks during the daylight hours. I no longer have vampire babies. They are, they are, you know, able to roam about during the day without getting overheated, which is really, really nice. They love going for walks and they're really loving that I am breaking their walks up throughout the day. Of course they love going for walks, they're dogs. They need to be exercised, they're big dogs as well. And they're shepherd dogs too on top of that, so they need to be exercised a lot. German says shepherds are like highly intelligent too. I fucking love them, they're such beautiful dogs. If I could ever, if I ever find a stray German shepherd, they're coming home with me. They are literally my favorite dogs. I really like huskies and malamutes, like any, any dogs that kind of look like wolves, they are, oh, I love them. I do like pit bulls and stuff like that too though, just because they're just so funny. But uh, and staffies, they just always smile, like dogs like that. Hey, what am I talking about? I like them all. I'm just not, very, I'm not very keen on the very smaller breeds, like the really tiny breeds. I like, my dogs are small, but like, I mean more like Chihuahua or like, um, like Yorkshires, Yorkshire Terriers and stuff. I'm not super keen on those, but um, yeah. Just well, even on deck, they can be cute too. So one of them it gets a long walk typically right now, if it's cool enough. Um, they get a long walk with me and then they both get a few short walks. And by short walks, we usually go about a mile. And it usually takes us about 20 to 30 minutes. It depends on how much they want to stop and smell about, you know? All depends on the smells. The smells dictate our walks in life and so do the poops. I feel like this part of the video is dedicated to me and I'm happy. You're doing a great job of walking your dogs. It's great to hear that you exercise them more than what you have been showing in the past because your puppies deserve that kind of love and attention. And especially if you're trying to lose weight, what a great excuse to get out of the house, to just walk your dog several times a day. Why not? That's our, that's our life. Is 
this all the stuff that she's made, is it? Or is it what she's bought? She's made this, that's impressive. I just put things in the fucking big bowl and weigh it out on the spot. I'm not about this sort of meal prep life. Not unless I have to go away. So I played with my hair on this day and that's what's up with the like space buns. I really liked it, it grew, I, so I hated it and I liked it and I loved it and then I was iffy about it and I don't know. I, I literally don't heat my food up either. I've got, I made some fish yesterday. Some, cause I'm gonna cut out some of my proteins. Uh, like the oily fish. I'll have them maybe on the weekends or something like that as a treat, but um, I'm cutting out my salmon. I'm cutting out the steak just because I want to cut back on calories, but I still want to eat the food. So I'm just eating like prawns, which by the way, air fried prawns. I don't know if you've ever done it, but I'm definitely gonna, that's gonna be a new staple. And like prawns, they're so like, you get so much of them and they're so low in calories. They are quite pricey, but I don't really care because they taste nice and you get a lot of food. So prawns, great. And uh, I'm having white fish, but I just eat that shit cold, man. Like I don't, when I'm dieting, I, I don't really care. I'll eat cold fish. I'll eat cold anything. It's like, meh, just I need to eat. You know, it's like I'd eat for function, not for taste. Even though my food does taste nice though. <laughs> it actually does taste good. Cause what I'm doing now with the fish is hold on. Because when I'm dieting, I'm all about a high fat life, right? So I do have mayonnaise, but I'm cutting back on mayonnaise and I'm replacing it with like oils. So for my chicken, uh, not for all of my meals, but for some of my meals. So I'm adding in like truffle oil, which is delicious by the way, um, on my salads. But what I do with my fish is that I get my mayonnaise, squeeze some lemon on there or in there in my meat. On the, in, so I get my mayonnaise in a bowl, squeeze the lemon in there, get some fresh dill, fresh dill, Mix all of that around. And then for my seasoning, I use this, this, this seasoning, which is basically fish seasoning in Dutch. But this is like the perfect fish blend. And what it has in it, it has, it has mustard seed, pepper, parsley, dill, and uh, salt, and sal uh, celery, and onion. It's just like a really good fish to seasoning. And I mix that together uh into like just like a dressing almost with the mayonnaise and to have that over your fish with some like beans or broccoli or salad it's really good really nice and what i do with my prawns is that my prawns i coat them before i air fry them so when i defrost them because fresh prawns is too expensive i get like the frozen ones i defrost them tap them dry because uh, obviously they are moist from the defrosting they're like they're in liquid but not completely dry you want them just slightly just a little bit moist still and then for the seasoning i use cumin coriander smoked paprika sweet paprika and chili and a bit of salt just coat all of that in it and then i air fry it and my air fryer i put it on 200 degrees five minutes each, so five minutes one side five minutes the other side and they're cooked perfectly i mean these are the big prawns though we're not talking the little ones like the the the, the tiger prawns that are like, like i don't know like that sort that sort of shape you know what i mean like the thick ones they're they're way they weigh around like 20 grams each 20 to 25 grams each air fry them for five minutes each side perfect really really delicious I think it's fun. It's something different and I like it. These meal prep meals are awesome. My husband and I did such a good job the other day. They're all so good and they definitely keep us very full and satiated. Well, I guess me more so than my husband. He's definitely had cravings this week. So I'm not really sure what's up with that because that's not usually his something that happens. But anyway, it's been really good. I Is that still the same electrolyte drink she's drinking or is that a different one? How many electro if that's if, if it's a different one, like how many electrolytes like does she, how many electrolytes does she need to drink in a day? Yeah, I have enjoyed the meal prep meals that we made and I'm just glad, I'm glad that we're doing it. I definitely recommend if you're like me and you struggle to track, doing it all at one time is a better way to go. For me, it's a really good meal. You've got your carbs, you've got your proteins. There's some healthy fats in there from the steak. Yeah, this is pretty good, especially if she's weighed it all out as well. Meal prepping like this allows me to track. And then if I do other things, it's easier. I wonder why she hasn't been doing this. Like literally her, for like, if she did this every single day, or for most of the days, throughout a whole year. Can you imagine the results she would have had? She would have been like a Louise's journey. I know I keep banging on about her, but I'm just really impressed by her, basically. She's just like, I'm genuinely, that just shows like what happens when you really put in that work. It's just, if you're de dedicated, where you're weighing out all of your meals and you're tracking everything and everything's weighed out, then 
you're going to lose more than a pound a week, basically. To track because I'm already tracking everything. So I, I just, I find it very encouraging and motivating. It makes the process easier and better for me. I mean, it's all about finding what works for us individually. That's what, that's what the key is, is what works for you on your journey. What do you need? Tracking works for everybody. It's not about what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Tracking works for everybody. If you want to lose body fat, you need to track your food because how do you know how much you're eating? You can't just um, freestyle what you're eating and thinking it's going to be fine because it won't. Even I, somebody that has been tracking food for a very long time, if I don't track my food, I overeat. I put too much food. I just overeat. I think it's just a natural thing to do. You just so if you want to lose body fat, you have to track. You have to weigh things out. You have to be consistent. You have to be patient. It takes a long time, especially if you're a bigger person. It took you a long time to get big. It's going to take a long time to lose all that body fat too. But you just have to be consistent, patient, and work on it every day. And yeah, there's going to be times where it sucks. There's going to be times where you're hungry. There's going to be times where you have cravings. But then you just have to bear in mind, like, what do you want? Do you want to lose the body fat or do you just want to eat the chips now? In order to be successful, and that's what you should do. <laughs> Talk to you later. Well, I skipped through about 10 minutes worth of filler content by the looks of it, where she's just walking her dog, which if you want to watch that, then the video is down below. So there's a big controversy around the whole raw meat, cooked meat. I always cook, I always weigh my meat out cooked because when you uh, cook it, often liquids come out of it. And depending on where you get your cut of meat from, like if it's really, really good quality, then you won't lose too many liquids. But if it's like cheaper quality meat, then they always use, they usually pump it full of fluids. So you do your, your hundred grams of chicken breast may become like, I don't know, 75 grams. So I always cook my weight out. I always weigh out everything cooked except for things like grains or like oats or grains of rice, um, cream of rice. So there's some things that I weigh out uncooked, but for the most part, I weigh out pretty much everything cooked. So I guess it's just a personal preference, but when you cook things, it does minimize in weight. I've never been told by anybody that preps me to weigh things out uh, uncooked. And I've never really seen anybody that is in a prep or that is a bodybuilder weigh things out uncooked. I'm not saying it's wrong because I don't actually know. I don't actually know what the right way is of doing it. I just do it um, cooked. Also, like, it's just less mess in it. Like handling raw chicken all the time for different meals. Pff, fuck that. Just cook it all up. Like, it's easier to, like, how can you batch cook? The thing is with this, like, how can you batch cook things? Unless you weigh everything out as in like a kilo of chicken and then you just portion it up into say 10 portions and then you know that or five portions for 200 grams of chicken each and then you know that um even if one portion is 150 grams and the next is 250 it's still 400 grams but yeah i personally don't do it i don't actually know if it's right or wrong i've just never seen anybody i just don't really see people cooking their uh proteins uncooked or a lot of their carb sources either, unless it's like grains or like, I mean, grains as in like, it's still like, um, like a powder or like, like oats, you know, that's what I mean. I don't know how to explain that. I mean, that does look quite nice, not gonna lie. That's quite a lot of sweet potato though. It's a rather large serving, that. It's like 200 grams of sweet potato there, maybe more. <laughs> See, I don't get it. So the comment, the, the reason she wasn't walking both the dogs at the same time is because she couldn't handle both of them. But now she's walking them and filming them. Shouldn't you, like, 
clearly, well, well, so what was the reason before that? So you do have, you have time to walk and film both dogs at the same time, which is difficult. Like I struggle with my, I'll voice note people when I'm walking my dogs. And like, I struggle with handling both of them at the same time. And they're fucking tiny. They're only like 15 kilos. These are what, like 35 kilo, 40 kilo, well, maybe not 40 kilo, but like 35 kilo dogs, 30 to 35 kilo dogs. And like, I know she's heavy too, but you know, you've gone from not walking both of them or allegedly not walking very much at all to now walking them and like filming every walk. And uh, I don't know. Too close. In flip flops. I know this is like nitpicky, but so this is, this contradicts what she, the thing with this is, is a contradiction of what she was saying or has said before where she doesn't want to walk both dogs because she's scared and like a dog got attacked and they're too powerful for her. But then it's like, now you're walking your dogs in flip flops whilst holding a camera, whilst holding a phone or a camera. Like, what is it though? Is it because did you, did, did you didn't walk them before because you just didn't want to walk both of them at the same time? Or is it because now, or is it because you were just too lazy to do it? <laughs> Before I go to bed, I just wanted to share how easy it is to track. <laughs> this is not an easy way of tracking. This is a very complicated way of tracking. It's, um, you're much better off using something like Chronometer or My Fitness Pal just to stick things in rather than looking things up because that's what you're going to have to use anyway. So you're going to look things up manually on YouTube or YouTube on Google to then write it down. And then, because here it's like cheese and eggs and broccoli, like 550. Okay, like, um, let me not jump the gun. Let me see how she got to that number. Track your food using a composition notepad and nutrition labels and or information that you find via Google. <laughs> and you don't have to have an app. So most foods have nutrition labels on the back. If they don't have a nutrition label, then you can Google it and you can get the same information that they plug into apps and you don't have to release all of your information to an app. Unless you want to use an app and then use an app. There's no judgment coming from me. But this is just how- I There is judgment coming from me. <laughs> I do it. It's not triggering for me. I do want to start tracking protein, but for now, this is what I'm tracking. I've got my breakfast. I use my calculator on my phone. I I'll look it up online if it's not clearly labeled. And then I just put the total amount. And then when we meal prep, so for all of our meal prep meals, we already have all of that figured out. So I literally just write it down. Hello, beautiful people. It's, to me, it seems a bit of a, a convoluted way of doing it. I know that she's adding in the totals, but so you're going to have to <coughs> calculate every item individually and then total up together. Why not? Like, I don't know. Like, to me, it just seems like a really roundabout way of doing it, because what she's having to do is she has to look up what, say, a cup of broccoli is, then what 150 grams of steak is, then what a... Um, whatever the eggs are, for example, if she had eggs, are like, I don't, I can't remember what the meal is. Sweet potato, sweet potato. What the sweet potatoes are. Fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. She's going to have to write all of those numbers down separately because you're having to work out what the calories are based on the nutritional facts because they don't have servings of like 150 grams. You have to look that up and do like multiply by one and a half or whatever it is per 100 grams. Or what if she had like 35 grams or 40 grams? So you, you're making the maths awkward. And then you have to add those totals up to just get to a single number. Whereas if you're using something like an app, or at least if you write it down where you're like broccoli calories, steak calories, this calories total. And then like, I know she's not kept tracking macros, but like, I don't know. She's not showing how she's getting these numbers. She's just writing down numbers. And I still don't think she's doing it properly. I just don't think she's tracking 100% as accurately as she could. Um, she is weighing things out. But I think I just feel the way she goes around it is just like to me it doesn't make sense. It just feels like there's a lot of extra steps. And like I understand maybe you want to write things down because then you have a, a record of it. But I don't know if you're trying to show people your health and fitness journey and your weight loss journey, why not just go? There you go. Look, this is what I ate yesterday because I'm kind of playing around with, with a new meal plan. So this is what I ate yesterday. I don't like. I don't understand what the secrecy or like, you know. I don't know. It's just. Is that just me? Is that just a me thing? And I'm. Am I just being really weird about the way that she's doing things in terms of tracking, and that it just doesn't make sense to me? Is that is that a me thing? It could be a me thing. If it is a me thing, then let me know, because to me it just seems a very roundabout way of doing things. 
Well, this week I weighed in at 285.6 pounds, which is a loss of 1.5 pounds. So I'm very excited about my weight loss this week. She's lost like 15 pounds in uh, what, a month and a half or something like that. That's really good. Really good. I feel more energized. And like I said, that may just be in my head, like a placebo effect of sorts. I Maybe I'm sleeping better at night. I don't know. I know that I'm going a little... But there's no actual weigh-in though, but then we never see actual weigh-ins. A little intense with the workouts. So that also is probably helping. Feel, I feel pretty good. I still have that underwhelming feeling is a good way to describe it. It's still there and I'm working with it. It happens. Like I'm just focusing on doing the things that I agreed to with myself, being patient and kind when I come up short and continuing to press forward by continuing to try and do the things that I know I need to be doing in order to be successful. So I was able to get a hold of myself and track pretty much everything this week. So I think pretty much everything. There's key words there. But she had a weight loss, so I'm sure she did good. I think it's kind of like a duh moment. Like, it's something that I don't necessarily need to say, but for me, tracking is just so important. I hope you've enjoyed this full day of eating with me and enjoyed seeing what increasing my calories just a little bit looks like. And I have not got in with a dietitian yet, so we will see how that goes. And, you know, we might be scaling it back when I talk to the dietitian, or we might be going forward with the caloric range that was recommended. I sort of... The recommended calorie range was like 3,300 though, wasn't it? Not 2,500 that she's eating now. I feel like I sort of feel like I want before I like buy fully into my caloric recommendations that I see some progress and I, I do buy into the BMR like I, he said that it was pretty accurate and I believe that and so I'm like okay well if I just eat at least the BMR range like what my body burns at rest then I should be good and I like I'm just going forward with that logic and we'll see see how it goes now the other stuff that he factored in he asked me like how much I worked out and things like that and I just told him like I walk the average number of steps that I do and then I do yoga and then I work out and then he came up with the whole other number on his own and so that's why I was like I just don't know I said about that didn't I so this guy is just fucking pulling numbers out of the air assuming that she's burning like thousands of calories well what did he say like 800 calories a day in exercise from walking and doing yoga and then like a half an hour workout no 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 I mean like 700 calories maybe from all of that I don't know. Walking doesn't burn a lot of calories, though. I know that people th think it does, but it, it, it may look like it does. Maybe it does for her because of the fact that she's like a larger person, of course. But yeah, there's uh, like burning cal the calories that you burn. Well, when exercising is not necessarily what is like on a heart rate monitor. It's an indicator, but a lot more goes into it, like lean mass. Um, just like how well your organs work, heart rates. So it's not just a heart rate thing. It's many other aspects too. And like, I don't quite understand the science of it. There's a lot more to burning energy and food consumption than just what heart rate is. And then that's not always accurate either. Because if you've had a Fitbit, you know that it fucks up sometimes and it sometimes gives weird readings anyway. If I need to eat that many calories. <laughs> and so, because I, I do know this, I know, for instance, he was using a computer program, and if I look at my watch, my watch always tells me I burn like 5 million calories in yoga, but I don't burn 5, many, 5 million calories in yoga, and he didn't tell me the equation he used to come up with the number of calories. So, anyway, this stuff is neither here nor there. I hope that you enjoyed my weigh-in. So, stay tuned for my month update video for September, and I'll go over all of the things. Okay, well, I'm going to end the video here. I didn't do any calorie counting because it was really hard for me to see what kind of food she was eating. And she doesn't. She didn't show. She didn't show how much it weighed. She just showed the food, and it was hard for me to gauge. So I didn't do the calorie counting. But I think it said around 2,400, which sounds probably about right. Uh, let's have a look if I can find it again. So she had a bill bar, potatoes, barbecue chicken and broccoli, quesadilla and broccoli, popcorn and olipop, cheese, eggs and broccoli, steak, and broccoli with sweet potatoes. Yeah, that sounds like it's probably around 2,500, to be fair. Sounds about right. I think it's good that she's absolutely meal prepping and weighing things out because at least this way she is more inclined to stick to a diet and less likely to overeat if the food's already there, prepared. It's just consistency, in it? Uh, I think 2,500 cal calories is probably all right for her with the walking and all of that that she's doing. I don't think she should, she should, should eat 3,500 calories or 3,300. Yeah, I mean, like, she's losing weight. She's doing pretty good so far. Since she's decided to sort of knuckle down a bit more, she's lost 15 pounds. So if she keeps this up, she'll be probably, like, 275, something like that, by the time Christmas comes around. So we know that now, with what she's doing, there are results. So if there's no longer results, then we know that she's messing up. So, 
Anyway, on that note, I am going to go. Thanks a lot for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, dislike the video if you disliked it. Let me know down below why. And insert a insert taco emoji because of the quesadilla. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.